Hey now family, my name is Pedro. Thank you so much for connecting uh, to the Now Church Online. Make sure that you comment, like, share, because you never know who this message is gonna impact. Uh, so again, thank you for connecting and let's get ready for the word. Hey folks, Pastor Javen here. I'm so glad you're joining us for today's service and for today's message. I promise you, I believe it's going to bless and impact your life in a way you never thought possible. Do me a favor, tweet, post, text, tell somebody right now, tune in. It's time to get into the Word. It's time to connect. We're on a great teaching series entitled The Takeover. All this year, God has been talking to us about what it means to take over. This month is the month of revival. Uh, God has really placed it upon our hearts every Sunday, every service we are laying hands and praying and believing God for a revival breakthrough in your personal lives. Make sure you get to the building and so that you can be in the place of grace so that you can get the breakthrough you need. But I'm glad you're joining us online today because I know God has a word for you uh, for this service. Let's pray our now beginnings, our now declarations prayer before we get into the word. Uh, would you pray out loud with me? Now is my time for healing, favor, blessings, and freedom. I am now anointed, appointed, and qualified. I now have faith, endurance, acceptance, and strength. I have divine wealth, prosperity, and a legacy. I love this. Now I'm empowered, victorious, triumphant. I now walk in exceedingly abundant joy, peace, and love. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go to John chapter 1, verse 16 through 17. It says, out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Today's teaching is titled, Access the Grace. Access the Grace. You know, grace is God's favor on our life. Grace is God's promotion. It's God's promises. And it's God's pro productivity in our life. And that's something that I think is so important for all believers to understand, and that is God wants to promote you, that God has promises with your name on it, and God wants you to be productive. And in order for that to happen, because let's be honest, life is so very, very against us many times. There are so many things that don't work in our favor. I, if, you, if you're waiting for the world system to work in your favor, I will venture to say you're never going to see the breakthrough that you need. But when you began to operate in God's system and when you began to stand in his will and when you began to tap into his grace, that's when all things start working together. Romans 8, 28, all things start working together for your good. When you see the good and the bad, when you begin to see the, the champion and the challenge, when you begin to see the overcoming and the overtaking, that's when you began to access the grace of God. So that's what we want to talk to you about today. When we look at our text, out of his fullness, the Bible says, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. This phrase highlights the abundance of grace provided by Jesus Christ. The term fullness there suggests that Jesus embodies the complete and perfect nature of God. The grace in place of grace indicates a continuous, ever-renewing supply of grace. So think about that for a second. When we tap into Jesus, you're talking about a source that never runs out. This suggests that the grace given through Jesus is not only a continuation, but a surpassing uh, ability of God's grace that will reveal itself continuously in time as you continue to tap into him. Let's, let's, let's keep going. Let's, let's go to the second line. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And when we look at this verse here, it contrasts the Old Testament law, which was delivered by Moses. As we know, Jesus is not on the scene. It contrasts the, uh, this, this particular law, which was delivered by Moses uh, with the new covenant established by Jesus. So Moses established, Moses preached the law, but Jesus fulfilled the law. The law provided moral and ethical guidelines, but God not God did not offer salvation in that dispensation. 
However, grace and truth is revealed when Jesus comes on the scene. And when Jesus comes on the scene, it transforms the shifting of the law of truth into the receiving of his grace. And this underscores Jesus as the fulfillment and the surpassing introduction of the new era of the law of the grace of God. So law without grace will only put us in a criminal dispensation of never being righteous. If all we have is law, if all we have is truth, if all we have is what is right and what is wrong to do, and we don't have the grace to be able to do it, how many of you know we're going to continue to fail at that every time? And this is what you had before Jesus comes on the scene. But when Jesus comes on the scene, he said, I didn't come to do away with the law. He said, but I came what? I came to fulfill the law. And so in order for us to, to be able to fulfill the laws of God, in order for us to love our wives and not uh, 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 be uh, after other people's wives, in order for us to, to watch our tongues and, and, and not have a lying tongue, in order for us to not uh, allow our minds to wander in promiscuity or wander in depression, in order for us to not be subject to addictions and to the sins of this world, you cannot do that just because the Bible said don't do it. There's no power there in just the truth. We've been told the truth many times that we're, we are in a political year and it's amazing how many people don't want to hear the truth. They are, they are, they are determined to believe a lie. And I would venture to say people are more encouraged to believe a lie than the truth anyway. And they will call the lie the truth. But when you began to embrace Jesus and when you began to embrace who he is in your life, when you began to embrace what he's done for you, you then begin to embrace the empowerment that gives you the strength to access the favor, the blessings, the grace that then allows you, listen to me carefully, don't miss this, it then allows you to live out the truth. Because you got to have truth, which is the word of God, but you need grace in order to live that truth. I cannot live this word without God's grace. The psalmist said, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. How, was I, how am I found? Because I found Jesus. I was blind, but now I can see. Some people say you didn't find Jesus. Jesus found you. However you want it to, to me, that's semantics. Either way, you connected with Jesus. And when you connected with Jesus, you connected with his grace. You know, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 God says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be meat in my house. He goes on to say, prove me in this, push me, test me in this, and see when I open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing where you won't have room. You know, our tithing and our giving is our highest form of worship because it says, God, my heart belongs to you. I am surrendering my ability to worship you in the highest form in giving just like you gave your son Jesus for us to live eternally in glory. I challenge you today to make sure that you tithe, make sure that you stay in covenant connection with a holy God and make sure that you always do your best to be a giver because God will open up the windows of heaven, pour out blessings where you won't have room and your life will continue to walk in the prosperous journey that he intended for you to have in the first place as a believer. Your actions bring blessings to your life. Take an action a day. And remember, giving is not, it's not about donations. It's about making a decision. I pray you decide to be a giver today. God bless you. So let's talk about how to access the grace of God in your life. Number one, recognize God's favor in your now. This is key. The, availabil the availability of God's grace is in your present moment right now. You say, Pastor, I don't feel no favor. You ain't got to feel it. It's there. You ain't got to see it. I promise you it's there. Paul said, be not weary in well-doing for you'll reap in due season if you faint not. It, it, it is quite possible. You've heard me say this before. It is quite possible to be doing well and not know it. I, I tell you what, let me put it back on you. I was going to tell a story about mine. But, but, but let me ask you a question so you can ponder this in your mind. You ever went through something or went through a season or, or got through something and three years down the road you look back you, and you recognize how good you had it? <laughs> you 
You ever, you ever was on a, on, on a vacation or lived in a certain house or maybe your childhood or whatever, and you look back on those days and you say, boy, I did not recognize how, how great of a family mom and dad provided for us. I, I didn't recognize how great of a time I had uh, with that uh, church service or with that ministry or whatever the case may be. That's not seizing your now moment. That's what it means to understand God's favor in your now. You have to recognize God's favor all around you. I want you to say with me, God's favor is all around me. Come on, say it again. Say, God's favor is all around me. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 says, For he says, In the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. Paul goes on and says, I tell you, now is the time, I love this, of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. You see, Jesus brought grace and truth, which are available to us right now. We need to recognize and seize his grace in our current circumstances, that even in our calamities, even in our failures, even in our mistakes, even in the things that are being said and done, even in, even like our church right now, we don't have a building. I still see God's favor. I'll tell you how I see God's favor, because God, over the moment we lost the opportunity to be in our building in a steady way, we, we made a few calls. I, I, what, to be honest with you, we didn't even make a lot of calls. We made about one or two calls, and immediately the, at, we had access to the Nova High School Auditorium. And immediately the uh, principal knew who Pastor Carlton was, and we, we had favor with her and had favor with the staff. And immediately we were able to connect. And immediately we were able to get into that building, get into uh, that facility, and all the favor of God just began to uh, pull together. Now, what if I would have been sitting somewhere going, God's, God's left us? What if I was sitting somewhere pouting or complaining, saying there is no favor here, God, God's grace is not on our life? No, I, I, I tapped into it immediately, and I recognized that God's favor was even with us, even in the midst. And, and that's something, church, listen to me, that you have to be looking for. That is something you have to recognize. That's something you have to constantly be saying, okay, God, where's your favor? That's what I want you to do tomorrow morning when you wake up. I want you to say, God, where's your favor? Show me your favor. God, what are you doing in this season? I don't care what the enemy is trying to make it look like. I want you to begin to say, God, show me what's really going on. Romans 8, 28. I want you to show me how you're making all things work together for my good so I can be quiet so that I can hold my peace, so that I can enjoy this process on my way to my promise. Recognize the favor of God, the grace of God in your life. Here's the second thing I want you to do if you're going to access God's grace. You have to let God's grace be your strength and your power. You have to let it be your strength, literally, and be your power. I'm so grateful that I've learned this lesson. I used to try to do a lot of stuff on my own. I, 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 had, a, I had a lot of uh, charisma, had a lot of connections, a lot of talent. So I used to always constantly be trying to just, you know, do the responsible thing, connect, connect, connect. And it just used to wear me out. It used to be, used to be tired. Some of us are just spiritually tired. People can't go to church these days no more it's just because they're just drained. They try to do ministry on their own. You can't do ministry on your own. You got to do ministry through the grace of God. You can't minister to God's people uh, on your own strength. Trust me when I tell you, church, you can't witness, you can't evangelize, you cannot be in ministry doing it on your own strength. You can't be a boss. You can't be successful. Now, you, if you want to be, if you want to sit around and do nothing, I, I imagine you, if you want to sit under a tree all day, I imagine you probably could do that on your own strength. I'm not sure, but I, that would probably even get frustrating, I would imagine. I wouldn't want to do this life without God's grace. You want to stand in the strength of God's grace, His power, and what He has to offer to you because it's so sufficient to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. But He said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect. Think about that. Look, look at that. My power is made perfect in what? In weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Church, in our now season, we often face challenges that seem insurmountable. But I want to tell you something. God's grace made perfect through Jesus empowers us to overcome these obstacles. And he, we find strength in our weaknesses. And Jesus' strength came when we learn how to trust him. His strength comes to us when we learn how to lean on him. His strength becomes perfect to us when we learn how to say, not my will, but your will be done. So you see, that's what happened to Jesus when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. It's when he released his strength to God's strength. Is that not what he did? 
He said, Father, this seems impossible. You see, because he was God in the flesh. He was all man. He was all God. So he knew the end before the beginning. He saw the lashes. He saw the beating. He saw the thorns on his head. He saw the, the, the sword in his side. He saw the nails that were going to be. He saw the vinegar. He saw the beating and the lashes. He saw his skin being ripped. So he had already began to experience that in his mind. And the Bible says he was filled with anxiety. He was filled with fear. He was fear, filled with with the, the, the thought that I cannot do this. And that's where somebody's at right now. You're thinking, God, I cannot do this. I cannot, I, I, I cannot take one more pill. I cannot take one more bad news. I cannot take one day more day of this. And I challenge you to pray the prayer that Jesus prayed. Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. But not my will, O oh Lord, but thy will be done. If you'll do that today, you'll begin to experience God's strength. If you'll do that today, you'll begin to experience his power. If you'll do that today, he'll lift you where you need to be lifted. He'll give you peace where you need it right now. He'll give you joy where you need some joy. He'll give you love. I'm telling you right now, when everybody can be hating on you, God will give you love. And you'll let the haters hate and you just keep on loving. You'll feel just what you need. I got one more for you. I'm talking about access and the grace of God. Use grace. When encountering other people. One of the most incredible ways to access God's grace is to operate in God's grace and extend it to those that are in need. I often say the more time you minister, the more you'll be ministered to. You see, when you extend grace to others, it manifests in your life more. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ has forgiven you. So experiencing God's grace through Jesus compels us to extend that same grace to others. In doing so, we create a cycle of grace that enriches our relationships. It enriches our community. It enriches our future. Someone once said it this way. Grace means that all of your mistakes now serve a purpose instead of serving shame. So as God has forgiven you, as God has blessed you, as God, as God has extended grace to you to say, we don't matter where you come from. We don't care the mistakes you made. I still love you. I still care for you. Jesus died for your sins before you sinned. Jesus died for the sins that you have not even committed yet. And he's still going to love you. And he stands with arms open wide. And God says to you today, extend that same grace to others. Don't be so quick to judge. Christianity is not about grabbing hold of a platform, standing on top of a soapbox and then judging people. That's not what Christianity is about. Christianity is about testifying and witnessing and telling people about the love of God, telling people about the grace of God. You should, we should, they should know that you are my disciples by how you love one another. When you begin to love one another, when you extend people's love, now you're exemplifying his light. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. When you extend that grace, grace is extended to you. The more you bless others, God begins to bless you and you begin to see his favor. Every time you get an opportunity to bless somebody with a tip, every time you get an opportunity to bless somebody with a kind word and encouragement, every time somebody comes on your mind, pick up the phone and say, send a text saying, I'm thinking about you today. Call somebody today. I'm praying for you. Call your fellow church members. Invite somebody to church. Win a soul. Bring them out to the house of God and begin to watch those same experiences happen in your life. I want to talk to you who have big children or grown children or you don't have children at all. When you see young people, they are our next generation. I want you to pour into them. Even if you have very, very small children, I want you to speak to some of the teenagers. This is our last time to bend their ears before they go into the world. I want you to extend that grace. When you extend that grace, somebody's going to extend that grace to your child. God forbid if, you're ne if you don't make it or if you're not around to see them grow old. It's important for us to extend grace to those that are in need, the, the less fortunate, the hungry, the widow the homeless, those that are out there. God says to us, we are responsible. Even the prisoners, those that, are, uh, that have been locked up, we are to extend grace. Well, pastor, who's supposed to do that? Isn't that you? Aren't you the pastor? I'm the shepherd. I am the shepherd of the house. God has called you to be the soul winner. God has called you to be the evangelist, the fivefold ministry. You ought to be in one of them. And when you began to tap into one of those ministries, that grace began to flow through your life. I'm telling you, church, you're going to see divine favor. You want, to, want that favor on your house? You want that favor in that new car? You want that favor on your career? You want that favor in your mind and your spirit? This is how you get it. 
You begin to extend it to others and then God begins to show up and show off in your life. And that's my final word to you today. Extend grace to others so that God can extend grace to you. Let's access God's favor. Let's access God's protection. Let's access God's productivity today. Father, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for your blessings. And I pray in the name of Jesus that your people will access the grace. This will be a month of divine favor. And we thank you for that in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you, church. Continue to be people, impacting people. We love you. God bless. Hey, folks, I don't know if you know or not, but At Now Church FL is an explosive platform for you to join and log in with so many great things going on here at Now Church. You're talking an explosive TikTok page, an incredible Instagram page, a dynamic YouTube channel, Twitter, and so much more. So we want you to begin to like, subscribe, and begin to follow us on our At Now Church FL and get impacted today. We love you. Hey folks, wow, what a powerful service that was. I need somebody to comment in, that was powerful. I need somebody to say, hey, if you ever been to the Now Church, you already know what that means. Listen, I need you to like, subscribe, share. Matter of fact, if you really enjoyed it and you got something from it, I need you to take your three points, because you know Pastor Javen gave you some wisdom keys. I need you to take your three points, copy the link, send it out to somebody, and find out what they got from it. Matter of fact, I need you to do that to five people. Can you do that for me? I love you. Make sure you sow your seed this week. Seed time and harvest is still working. We love you. We looking for blessings. This is the year to take over. Whatever you got to do, share this link with somebody. Like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Pastor Charlie, Now Church FL, I love you. I look forward to seeing you in person if you're in South Florida.